I don't think I could have imagined Trey Lance being a Dallas Cowboy, but <laughs> Trey Lance is a Dallas Cowboy. And I actually got five reasons why I think this is a really good trade and a really good pickup for the Dallas Cowboys. Let's talk about it. So there is a lot to unpack. Um, when I say a lot to unpack, I mean a lot to unpack. And it's crazy because I just got back from another mini little vacation, went to the beach for a couple of days, um, and I'm getting calls. I'm getting blown up. That's why I haven't put out much content. I'm getting a lot of calls from people. I'm like, why, why at you know 7 p.m. Am I getting these calls and what's going on? My Twitter's blowing up. Well, of course, the Dallas Cowboys have traded a fourth round pick for quarterback, former first round pick, former number three overall pick, Trey Lance. <sighs> wow. The first thing you're thinking about is, <sighs> wow, like, is this real? What's going on? And then you think about it and you say, hmm. What were my thoughts on the player? Now, I've been doing this long enough, and that's what I'm jumping right into it because there I got my bags that still need to be unpacked. We have a lot to unpack right now. North Dakota State, I remember covering Trey Lance. All right, he's drafted in 2021. I remember covering him. I remember covering Zach Wilson. I remember covering these guys and, you know, the why I was never high on Zach Wilson. And I always believed that Trey Lance had the measurables. He has the tools. Even still, he has, he was blessed. God sprinkled fairy dust on him, and he blessed him with the athleticism. He blessed him with arm strength. And he blessed him. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a phenomenal, he's a dynamic, phenomenal athlete. We're not going to take that away from him. Now, what we're not going to do is make excuses for the guy either. The truth is, we have to call it what it is. He did not pan out in San Francisco. Now, I'm going to give some reasons why I think that may have happened, but I'm also not going to absolve him. Uh, or he's not going to get any excuse, and I wrote it down. I mean, he, he didn't pick up the offense. He was late with his reads. There were, there were reasons why Trey Lance just didn't play good quarterback in San Francisco. Injuries, and injuries is something that you just can't control. But we have to now pull back the curtain, and now this is where we start unpacking. So, Kyle Shanahan. One of the smartest, one of the best play designers. One, of, he, He's a guy. I actually listened to his, they had a podcast series on him, Sean McVay, Mike McDaniel, the whole tree. And it just spoke about just how smart, brilliant Kyle Shanahan is. And I believe that he is. I also believe a few things about offensive coordinators who are that brilliant and that good. And they're always plucking and searching and needing certain players and pieces, right? So you get to a championship with Jimmy G, okay? Get to a championship with Jimmy G. But then Kyle Shanahan starts to see a shift in the league. He starts to see the athletes, right? And he starts to see players like Josh Allen. He starts to see players like Lamar Jackson. And it starts to become a thing where it's like he wants an athlete at quarterback. And so to fast forward, he has a great team. You know, we're not going to give – I'm not going to do the, the San Fran uh, recap error here. But he has a great team. And he drafts a quarterback, and he expects them to elevate them farther than what Jimmy G could. I think that was mistake number one. Because you're taking a guy from North Dakota State who loved North Dakota State. They put some pros in the NFL. Carson Wentz went to North Dakota State. He also fell off a, a, a tree with his play. That's a that's a that's a heavy lift for a guy to and what are we asking him to do? Shanahan has had the same scheme since Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan, Trey Lance, two totally different spectrums. They're on two totally different fences of quarterback play. You can't ask Trey Lance to do things that you would ask Matt Ryan, Brock Purdy, all these guys to do. But the reward in the athleticism is so much greater. I'll say this as well before I get into the five reasons why. And I do have five reasons why I believe that Trey Lance and him coming to Dallas is a great thing. I said this the day. Listen, my track record is, is, is like really good. It's, it's kind of flawless. I remember saying this when we picked up Amari Cooper. People, why would we give up Amari Cooper this and the third? Well, number one, I trust Will McClay. I trust Will McClay to do the research. Number two... I know what I know with how this team develops and how they're going to cater things 
and call plays and do things, they're going to take that Dan Quinn approach where, hey, we're not going to play Micah off ball and let him read. Let's do things that he does well. And I don't know if Shan- – I got to do more research, right? But just know what I know about Shanahan and just the, what I've studied. I just don't know how much he, – he's only played eight games. Listen to this, guys. Crazy stat that I wrote down. It, it, he's the first top five pick ever to only play eight games. I mean, excuse me, to play – yeah, he, he's only played eight games as a top five pick before he's been traded. Johnny Football at least played 14 games. Like, you don't even know enough. Then he gets injured. Then he loses his job to Brock Purdy, and Brock Purdy is able to, you know, come in. and. But I have some thoughts about Brock Purdy as well, but I don't want this to get too long. So, anyway, I believe that in any San Fran fan challenge me if I'm wrong. I don't know if San Fran did a good enough job of catering to his skill set. I know that Shanahan did that when he was on that staff in Washington with Robert Griffin, but then – Mike and his son wanted the offense to expand, and I get that. I understand that. But, my God, if you give up three first-round picks for a guy, I'm running something that makes him comfortable. Uh, excuse me, comfortable. You watch Anthony Richardson. They're running RPO. They're running zone read. One read. They're making this guy. Let's get his, his sea legs under him first. It doesn't help when you have Jimmy G, who the locker room may already believe is better than you, and, hey, we have jobs. We can't, we don't have time to watch you develop, Trey Lance. So that's, I just want to set that up. You had a good team that you expected a kid from North Dakota State to elevate. I don't know if that was smart on San Francisco's part. And I love Trey Lance coming out. And he hasn't panned out. This is an excuse. I just don't know if that was smart. Now let's get to the five reasons why I think Dallas Cowboys are very smart for picking him up. Third overall pick, injuries hurt him. Um, Early on, to me, Trey Lance, I just don't know if he's even been given a, a good enough shot. You look at Jordan Love, he's been sitting for three years. Let, like, we live in this popcorn mentality. Five reasons why I do believe that the Cowboys did a great thing by picking up Trey Lance for a fourth-round pick. It's nothing. It's peanuts. It's peanuts from South Carolina, okay? Nothing. If he doesn't pan out, you cut him. It's cool. He goes plays in the, in the UFL. He goes plays in the XFL. It's nothing. It costs you nothing. Okay, but the reward is great, and I trust Will McClay, and I trust Will McClay's relationships with people around the league to know when I trust Will McClay's eyes to say, hey, maybe if we put something in to get this guy where he needs to be and to give this guy confidence. It's amazing what Geno Smith looked like with confidence. I'm watching Malik Willis year two, how he looks with confidence. The pendulum is swinging, guys. Maybe we don't have to just throw these guys out there. Everybody's not Pat Mahomes. All right, Jalen Hurts did not look like Jalen Hurts last year, year two. He looked like he was on his way out the league. Dak spoiled a lot of play. Dak spoiled a lot of people being a fourth-round pick coming in and being as successful as he was. All right, reason number one. The truth of the matter is he's an upgrade over Cooper Rush athletically and traits-wise. Now, if he can't get it up here, I'm out on it. Trey Lance, but he is an upgrade over Cooper Rush. He gives you a higher upside than Cooper Rush. There's just no denying that he's a better athlete. He has a stronger arm. It is what it is. If he can get it up here, it, there's just no denying it. He gives you more than Cooper Rush ever will. And last year at times when Cooper Rush was in there, the offense got still. It just is what it is. Number two, there's absolutely no pressure, absolutely no pressure in Dallas for Trey Lance to do anything. That right there is enough for Trey Lance to come in, learn from four, learn from Cooper Rush, learn how to be a pro, stay in shape, and just become a good quarterback. And they're going to give him opportunities next year's preseason. Obviously, he won't have enough in this year's preseason, but they'll give him opportunities in next year's preseason to be a good player. Number three, competition. The truth of the matter is he ran this offense in, um, in, at North Dakota State. He ran a West Coast offense, quick game, get the ball out, with a lot of RPO stuff, run the ball. When Dak sees that and the players see that and things start to go his way, I guarantee you players will say, hmm. I guarantee you Dak will say, hmm. This is not for Trey Lance to take Dak's job. This is for Dak to look in the room and say, there's somebody who could possibly push me. You need that at every level. 
every level you need that. So I think the competition, if nothing else, just to see somebody, because Dak's looking at Cooper Rush the same way he looked at Kellen Moore, and there's no threat. The same way for years, the Cowboys brought in nobody to push Tony Romo. So Tony Romo can go out there, throw five picks, and there's nobody to push him. Nobody. So I just think that that competition piece is big. Number four, injury. And this is the most important one. Dak has missed 17 games over the last three years, y'all. If we bring Cooper Rush in, because he would get denied right away, obviously. You know, I, I, and, and listen, love Will Greer. Love doing West Virginia, but Trey Lance is kicking Will Greer off this shit. It just is what it is. He's gone. But if Dak were to get hurt, Cooper Rush is still the guy. But what if the offense were to get stale with Cooper Rush? And what if it's like week seven, week eight, and Trey Lance has been around and he knows some things and Mike's able to scheme something up? Now your season isn't lost because, believe me, this move was more than just um, just getting a guy. This was you're bringing in somebody that if something does go wrong before, your season is saved. I'm just saying. And if nothing else, number five for me, he's Trey Bate later. Let's say he comes in and next year he's your, he's your backup quarterback because – Dak has a great year. We get to the NFC Championship. Maybe we lose. Maybe we win. We in the Super Bowl, whatever the case may have you. But we still are riding with four. We redo his contract. And the contract is big, too. I'm not even going to get into the contract talk because I do believe that Dak Prescott is the quarterback of this team. Whether he gets on my nerves, hell, there's tweets about me saying I wanted Trey Lance to replace Dak. I Dak gets on my nerves at all, all the time. But at the end of the day, he is the quarterback of the Cowboys. Make no mistake about that. But what if Trey Lance comes in and he – shows that he can do something and now you can use him as trade bait if he comes in Dak is great and you and you, and you bring in Trey Lance and you're showing him a preseason game he's like wow hmm such and such has had injury they need a quarterback hello so these are the reasons that I've outlined another thing that I want to say is this and, and, and I'm going to let you guys sit on it. Please get in the comments, y'all. Please share this video around because I wanted to take my time on this video. I didn't want to just drop the video. I wanted to take my time on this video. My last final point. I'm going to tell you guys right now. I'm going to go on a limb. Sam Darnold sucks. So I really hope that Brock Purdy is who, who Kyle Shanahan, I always want to say Mike, who Kyle Shanahan thinks he is. Sam Darnold is sorry. I, I, he may be making the throws right now. He's not a good leader. His body language sucks when things don't go his way. I'm telling you now, Sam Darnold is not going to leave San Francisco anywhere. Trust and believe that. He, he's not. I covered him at USC. Liked him coming out. <clears throat> he, he goes to the Jets. They stink. He goes to the Panthers. You see they just drafted Bryce Young. Sam Darnold is not the answer. You better make sure that, that, that Brock Purdy doesn't turn into a pumpkin. And you gave up on this guy a little bit too early and didn't put the resources and the scheme around to fit who Trey Lance is. So that's my thoughts. This was a lot, guys, especially on a Friday night. What do you guys think? Um, this, this is going to be extremely, extremely interesting uh, uh, down the pipe just to see how everything folds. And I don't know if the Cowboys are even done making moves, but what do you guys think? Five reasons why I do like the Cowboys bringing in Trey Lance. You guys let me know what you think. Next week is game week. That's crazy. It's your boy Foots, man, as always. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing.